So today I am going to prophetically preach to you today about take it by force. Now let's go into the third scripture. You need to move very quickly with me. We're going to read some scriptures here. The fourth scripture. The fourth scripture. Hallelujah. The fourth one. This is not the fourth one. Yes. Let's read it together. First Timothy chapter 6 verse 12. It says what? Fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life to which you're also called and have confessed the good confession in the presence of many witnesses. Turn to your neighbor and say, are you a fighter? Or are you a coward? Let's turn to the next scripture. <laughs> Go further down. This is Paul speaking. He says, I have what? Fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. Hmm. Next verse. Finally, there's laid up for me a crown of righteousness with the Lord, the righteous judge, will give me on that day, not to me only, but also to who have loved his appearance. To your neighbor say, are you fighting a good fight? Or are you a bad fighter? Or are you a coward? Jesus. Let's take your seats. Have a heart of us. There is an anointing today to destroy satanic yokes. And that anointing shall go in to everywhere there is a yoke. Because the Bible says in a book of Isaiah chapter 10 verse 12, for the yoke shall be removed, shall be broken by the anointing, and the burden shall be removed. So I stand as a prophet and I declare to you that satanic yokes in this service shall be destroyed by the anointing of God, by the seven spirits of the living God, they shall be destroyed. Now, wisdom key number one. Catastis. Life is a fight. Life is a fight. And your attitude for the fight could be on or off. <laughs> That's the wisdom. Life is a fight and the attitude for the fight could be on or off. Jesus. Mm. So, you were born in a fight. Now, the Lord spoke something to me. He said, because he gives you the purpose of the service. He says, 90% of your leaders and 90% of your congregation do not have the attitude to match their warfare. I'm not saying the warfare. I'm saying the warfare that is against you. You actually do not have the, the attitude to match it. Many of you do not think you are a serious target for Satan. You think, I need to pray for Dr. Thomas. You see what he just did? Hey, he went after them witches. Wow, we need to pray for him. You are just as much a target as me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, Paul said, I have fought a good fight. So, there are people who do not fight a good fight. So, the wisdom key number two. You were born with a fighting spirit. Your spirit is the spirit of a fighter. But, you choose whether you have, let me say it again, 
You were born with a fighting spirit. And you choose whether you have the spirit of a fighter or the spirit of a loser. So let me, let me say it again. Your spirit is the what? Fighting spirit. But that does not mean you have the spirit of a fighter. Oh my Lord. Hey. <laughs> your spirit is a what? Is a fighting spirit. Your spirit man fights. Who has ever been at home? You wake up in a dream and you feel your body being oppressed. Who has had that? Who starts fighting? Who starts fighting? What is that fighting? Your spirit. Your spirit. Now, do you have to say, spirit, fight. Spirit, wake up. Fight. Do you have to tell your spirit that? No, your spirit automatically does what? It fights. So, your spirit is, your spirit has a fighting nature. But you could have the spirit of a coward with a fighting nature. Hey! It's like what the Bible says. It says, a beautiful woman without discretion is like a gold ring on a pig's nose. Book of Proverbs. Hey, catabasis. Hey. Hey. You know, a pig does not know. I have born this child after nine months or 11 months. And the pig gets hungry and the pig will eat it. So, what is telling you is that there are women who do not even know how to leverage and utilize in a God-given way the beauty God gave them. That means, number one, they don't even know how to dress. In fact, they don't even know hairstyle. They don't, they don't even know your style. Because the Bible says the glory of a woman is her hair. So your hair reveals your face or hides your face. Your hairstyle either reveals the beauty of your face or obscures the beauty of your face. But a woman without discretion, that means she has no intelligence, would put on a style that shows her worst features. She has a big nose and the style that highlights the nose. Shava has a disease, Eka has a zebra has a disease, Eka has a disease. I mean, can I preach like I was born to preach? It's a have a hazard. So the woman has no, she has, she has no understanding of this is my face, this is my facial structure, this is the style that brings the best out of me. All she sees, I see her, my sister with that style. I like it. I see that weave. I like it. I see that wig. I like it. Is the wig for you? No, but I see this lady wear this wig. I must wear it. No, no. Discretion means is a the word discretion means the Bible says discretion is somebody who thinks, contemplates outcomes before they act. <laughs> so, wisdom we, number three: a, a man or a woman of discretion contemplates outcomes before she acts. 
So a woman like that does not contemplate an outcome before she acts. She just acts. <laughs> so she has no discretion. So what God gave her, she doesn't know how to utilize. Ay, ay, ay. Bless the Lord. But let's go back to faith. Shevra Habazis. Some of you want me to continue in this topic. But that's different. Shevra Habazadas. Now, Hazas. You are born with a fighting spirit. And, but many of you do not have the spirit of a fighter. Or you don't have the, the spirit of the fighter that matches your fight. It is not that you don't have the tools. It is that you are not angry enough. You are not vexed enough. You are not militant enough. Come. Shh. You have some ladies. You say, stop it, stop it. Is this a serious fight? <laughs> what is this? No, you're fighting. It's a fight. Leave me alone. Leave me alone. Leave me alone. What is that? I, okay, yes, I know. It is resistance. But the spirit of the resistance is different. Hey! What about this? If you come here, You see that? You see that? You see the difference? Did you even feel the spirit? That's it. Hey. You see, it changed automatically. So, do you know the devil knows that? Did I hit him? No. All that happened is my spirit. If I keep saying, well, wow, I hope the prophet is under the anointing today. <laughs> All of you, you, you are like, Woo, wow. You're like, hey. So, the devil actually knows when you're not serious. So, what I just did is now a serious fighting spirit. So even if I'm a woman and I'm four feet and the guy is six feet and I take a chair, he will say, hey, okay, this one is a bit dangerous today. You see, this this now, this this now, this this is too, this is now what this is okay, because of what? The spirit. Oh, yeah, yeah. I declare by the Holy Ghost. You are rising and you are acquiring the spirit of a fighter. That's why I like my Chinese brothers. They know how to fight. They know how to demonstrate the spirit of a fighter. They will say, you see you? To do their thing. <laughs> then, then, after doing it, huh, they then take a knife to show you how they're serious. They take a knife and they cut their own self and they put it down and they do the blood. <laughs> You're like, it's like, okay. Okay, boy, you see this one now? It's, it's very serious. <laughs> I mean, you want to fight me. You cut your own self. They will lick the blood. They will look at me. 
I, I think I will want. No, no battle has happened yet. I said, no battle has happened yet. Hey, I said, I did for you. They're like, oh. like, hey, this is, this is, what, what, what kind of thing is this? What? Hey, it's like, okay. even if you're fighting a four foot woman, and the four foot woman takes a knife and does this, you like, what is it about her that I don't know? <laughs> you know, what is it about her that I don't know? Spirit, I remember I was in Sierra Leone. And at that time, there was gangs. Okay, thank you so much. Give me a hand. There's a gangs. And there's a gang going around called Black September. That's the name of the gang. And they were armed gang. And they were hitting rich areas at that particular time. And I was saved. And one night, we have a high wall of about perhaps seven to eight feet all around the house, you not know, like African movies, with bottles of glass above that's put in there for protection. So it's a very high wall that goes all around the house. And the, the, the acreage of the property is like a football field. So that goes all the way around. So I was there and my mom said, what is that? And we had noises of people climbing over the wall. And they're climbing over the wall and those guys have guns and everything. My, my dad was gone, he was in England. And I was there, I was the eldest that's there. And I said, Lord, what should I do? And I felt, I have to demonstrate the spirit of a fighter, which is called courage. So the word, next piece of nugget, Jesus, the word of the Lord came to Joshua and said, you are going to take the land. Be strong and what? Very courageous. So courage is bravery in the presence of danger. She said, be brave in the presence of danger. So I knew those guys had already landed on the property. And the Holy Ghost told me what to do. And I went on and I went to the bathroom. And I stood on the toilet. And I put my, my voice out. And they were there at night. And the Lord said, Holy Ghost said, speak in tongues in a very bold, aggressive way. So I went out there and I said, Shokomanda Hazza, Montokola Hosaho, Rakatatosh, Mantokola Hatakotosa. All of a sudden, I heard, I saw the all fours. No, they're thinking, you're late at night. This little light you're going to I didn't hear. Punko to no masiho. Manto kutu kusa. Oka na hi. Oto hosa hata hayo. Hey. So he. Officer. Boom. There was a moon. There was a stillness. And then I continued. Manto hodo mahati. Mankotosha, look at the Mondesh, oh, die. All of a sudden, I just said, oh, they jumped over the wall, boom, they ran out. The fight was over. All that happened is I showed a fighting spirit. Oh my God. Oh, don't you never say, I'm rising in this area. Hey, you see, so many of you have been traumatized by the demonic because you don't have a fighting spirit, you have a crying spirit. 
you have a moaning spirit you have a grumbling spirit you have a complaining spirit you have a griping spirit but you don't have a fighting spirit but i declare today by the anointing a fighting spirit enters the spirit of a fighter enters you now number jesus so what that was i confronted the evil with the strength of my spirit and they ran they said boy this house that house has spirits <laughs> we're not touching that house we are not touching that house that's how we avoided being robbed or being shot or my mother being raped you understand me? That was a serious fight. That's how that stopped by me being courageous. And no bullets were exchanged. It was just my spirit. Now the Bible says, it says, be sober and vigilant. For your adversary, the devil, walketh around like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. Now, predators, when they hunt for game, they, when they see game, predators do not attack the strongest. They attack the weakest. So to be weak and to be a coward puts a target on your head in the spirit. Is it because the devil seeks whom he may devour? So if the devil is now going through the homes in DVA, they say, let's, we need to attack members in DVA. And they come, they go to one house, they go to Latoya's house, taking us Latoya. And when they go there, she senses their presence. And she says, and she goes and takes oil of vengeance. And she said, God, you come here, you devour my fire. They say, okay, no, okay, let's just check. The, let's, okay, we see this one. This one is very this thing. Let's check the next one. So they check the next one. The next one is, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He leadeth me beside still waters. He restored my soul. This ah uh, no, this 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 one. It looks, it looks. She's not that hot. She looks. She cries a lot. One thing. I mean, as 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 we come, as soon as she feels the presence, she's thinking, why me? Why? What did I do? Why was I born in my mother's house? Why was I born in my father's house? To be getting all these attacks? Why? Why? And she even gets to the phone. She said, could you believe? Samantha, I felt evil spirits in my room yesterday. I went over was born in this family. I'm sure it's my dad, you know, it's my dad. I, I, I to tell you. I, and you know, and I can't even meet with the prophet because meet with the prophet is already booked. There are no names to that. And it's so difficult to meet prophet. I, I tell, tell you, hey, hey, I'm tired of this family. I'm tired of these demons. No, the demons are like, wow, boy, wow, wow. We, we did, this is exciting. This is, this is exciting. Because they, they, they can see your vulnerability. Because you do not have the spirit of a fighter. Somebody say, the spirit of a fighter is rising in me. Now, I've preached to you and showed you that next wisdom nugget, God created two worlds. The invisible world and the visible world. So God created two worlds, the invisible world and the visible world. Okay, that's the next wisdom nugget. The next wisdom nugget is this. The invisible world 
stores your goods. And it's then downloaded into the visible world at the allotted time. The invisible world stores your goods and is downloaded into the visible world at the allotted time prompted by your faith. Jesus. So let's go to the beginning scripture now. Ah. Oh, I feel this anointing on me. Psalms chapter 34, Psalm 31 verse 19. It says, oh, how great, somebody read it. Oh, how great is the goodness which thou hast laid up for them that fear thee, which you have wrought for them that trust in thee before the sons of men. So he says, oh, how great. That means God has laid up Jesus. Woo! Somebody say laid up. The word laid up means reserved. So that means everybody here, before you were born, goodness was reserved for you. And the goodness that was reserved for you is what? Great. Is what? Great. So the next wisdom of nugget is that every person made by God came to the earth with goodness laid up in the world of the spirit for them. Oh, how great is the goodness. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, how great. You see, oh, how great is the goodness. So, you may have been born in a cack house, but goodness has been laid up for you. You may be born in a what? In a whole house, but goodness has been laid up for you. You may be born where? On the street, but what? Goodness has been laid up for you. You see, as long as you're made by God, goodness was laid up for you. And the goodness that was laid up for you is great. And the great applies to all. Are you part of all? Is your name part of all? Jesus. Shika. So goodness has been laid up for you. So you, you see, these are the things that the spirit of knowledge has to rise in you for. Mm -mm -mm. Jesus. Now, there's an issue there. But somebody says, if I, if great goodness is laid up for me, why don't I see it? The reason why you have not seen it in the spirit, and from today you shall begin to see it. I said from today you shall begin to see it. I said today you shall begin to see it. It says, which has laid up for them that fear thee. Now, the Bible says, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. It says, ha. Huh. It says, so the fear of the Lord, it produces a fruit called holiness. And the Bible says, without holiness, it is impossible to see God. What it's talking about is not seeing the person of God is seeing what God laid up for you. So it takes holiness to see fully the goodness that is laid for you. It takes the fear of God. So, next wisdom nugget. Wisdom key. Without the fear of God, your eyes cannot be fully open to see the goodness laid up for you in the world of the Spirit. Without the fear of God, without the fear of God, you cannot, your eyes will never be open to see the goodness that God has laid up for you in the world of the Spirit. So, there are people, they don't fear God. Now, let me explain what it means, the fear of the Lord. The word fear of the Lord means the reverence 
of Adonai. The word Lord is Adonai. It means owner and master. What it means, it means you fear the fact that one day you have to stand before him and give account. So, those who fear that they have to give account for their actions, seen by men or unseen by men, their eyes get open to what God reserves for them. Oh boy, can I push this? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I say, can I push this? So, but there are people, I know pastors who don't have the fear of the Lord. I know prophets who don't have the fear of the Lord. Because the things that they do, they will not do if they have the fear of the Lord. Are you with me? I'm not saying falling into sin. I said some, some terrible things that you really don't fear the Lord in doing those kinds of things. You really don't fear the Lord. Shabbos. Laharas. So, not everybody has the fear of the Lord. Now, the fear of the Lord will produce holiness in you. And the holiness will open your eyes to see. So, could it be the reason why you have not seen how to get the money for your house? You have not seen the provision God has for you is because you lack the fear of the Lord? You see, because if you don't fear the Lord, now here's the thing. You see, the password to see it is the fear of the Lord. The password to get it is to trust him before the sons of men. That means, that means in the presence of your brother who believes, your sister who does not believe, you say, God is bringing me to my wealthy place this year. They say, they say, they say, what are you talking about, wealthy place? He says, no, my God. They say, you're always about your God, your God. So the Lord wants your faith to not be hidden when you're in the presence of people. He doesn't want you to have secret faith. Oh, how great is the goodness which you've laid up for them, the fear of the which thou has wrought for them. Now, the word wrought means he brings it to you. He works it for you. So what makes him come to you is your faith. So, so faith, the fear of the Lord makes you see it, and faith makes you download it. Oh, my God. Oh, hallelujah. I said the fear of the Lord causes you to see it. And your faith makes you what? Download it. But your faith has to be in the presence of what? Men. Because God does not want you to be a man of faith in private and a man of doubt in public. You're inconsistent. If you say, my God shall supply my needs. So someone tells you, huh? Jobs, huh? Jobs, jobs. Barbados, you heard what they did at Wyndham. Hey. And you heard what happened with uh, I mean Sandals. Hey. The economy is bad. What are we going to do for jobs? Huh. And then you in church, you're saying, the spirit of a fighter is on me. Wealth and riches is in my house. And then at work, they say, hey, what do you think? Huh? Before, I mean, most of us, we're, going, we're not going to get unemployed very soon. And you say, you say, for me, my God will handle me. But just to join the conversation, just to be in the clique, you say, I am telling you. <laughs> I am telling so, 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 it's more important for you to join the clique with your colleague that has no faith to join the conversation that it is to say I know by the grace of God I'll be good. They say you always talk about God. No, 
by the grace of God, I'll be good. But for you to fit in with your conniving colleagues who talk about you behind your back, you will sell out Jesus. Katabazis. Oh, in the name of Jesus. Right now, someone's faith is rising. I said, so, right now, someone is recovering the fear of the Lord. I said, someone is recovering the fear of the Lord. Someone is determined, I'm going to demonstrate my faith in the presence of people. It's one of the qualities that I really love about my wife. I mean, she's very bold in that area. Oh, my Lord. I, I have seen, you know, when she, I, the prophetic was activated in her, and she go back among her, her old colleagues and friends, and she go there, and she would say, and I watch her, because for me, I would not say it that way, but I saw her faith, and I left her, because I was, I was she would say, oh, Say example, one of them is called Tina. Oh, you know, Tina, yesterday I had a vision. I said, Tina's eyes go like this. And <laughs> I said, in this vision, the Lord showed me this. And she would speak like, Tina would be like, whoa, 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 whoa. And anyone who knows my wife, she speak with conviction. So, and, 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 and the Lord was showing me this. In fact, in fact, do you know something? When I was coming down this road, I had a vision when I came down this road. <laughs> now, Tina doesn't know half of visions. Tina doesn't know half of visions. And here is this lady, just speaking, and she's speaking with the guys as well. Oh, hey. Oh, Randy, yes. <laughs> you know, last night, huh? I was thinking about something, and the Lord gave me this vision. I know, look at the guy's face. <laughs> he doesn't really know what to do with his face. And she's just speaking. And I really love that quality about her. And, and uh, because that will cause God to do what? Because you're not ashamed of your encounters. You're not ashamed of what God's doing in your life. You, you are just saying it like it is. Oh, somebody here is losing their shame. I said, somebody here is losing their shame. I said, somebody here is losing their shame. I said, somebody here is losing their shame. La kahata hoses. So, now, so in this scripture, we see three wisdom principles. Number one, goodness is laid up for you before you are born. Number two, your eyes are open to see the goodness when you fear God. And number three, you access the goodness by your what? Faith. Now, next scripture. Now, now this is my favorite. The next scripture is this. This is the spirit of a fighter. He said, I would have fainted. Because the Lord spoke to me, he said, 90% of you people, but I believe it's now reduced. That was before the message. He said, 90% of your people have the spirit of a fainter. What's the spirit of a fainter? A fainter, like we had one. Oh, Lord. This one, I tell you, I really regretted even bringing her to the birth. <laughs> so it's the birth of my first child. Or the birth of my second child. And I brought the sister. As the sister was seeing the birth, she was fainting. Wait, 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 wait. You see, it's like, it's what, I love to myself, wait, wait, exactly what. I mean, I, 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 I was, I was, wait, Exactly. Right now, the attention needs to be on the birth of the child, and you're now fainting, and you're drawing from 
the birth of the child to you, it becomes. <laughs> I'm like, what is the, what is the matter? I'm just like, oh, 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 oh. I was like, what is this? Child birth makes you faint. Jesus. So there are people who they have the spirit of a fainter. They hear some news. Collapse. They just pass out. Oh, Lord. In fact, there's some of you, you saw how, do you know where you know you have the spirit of a fainter? Do you know the sign you have the spirit of a fainter? When you have the expectation when there's nothing bad happening. You just see the phone ring and you think, hey, this is bad news. What are they going to say? That means you, you're already getting ready to faint. You see, you see, you see. <laughs> there's nothing to faint about. But your people, if I can say, hmm, I'm not going to go to pick it up because I'm sure it's going to be bad. Hmm. And you call and say, what is it? So I just call to say hi. Are you sure? I mean, you are prepared to fit. That's because you have an expectation. What David said, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. I do not fear evil. Because the Lord is with me. Jesus. I mean, some of you, your husband is coming to come at 6 o'clock, doesn't come at 6.30. Hmm. 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 7 o'clock. Hmm. And he calls. Your heart goes. Boo, 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 boo. I will die. Hey. It's not your spirit, man. This is you are a fainter in the name of Jesus. Every fainting spirit evaporates from your life today. I said, every fainting spirit. Jesus said that men ought to pray and not to faint. Woo! Stop passing out. What makes people faint? News. What makes people faint? What they see. Somebody say, I refuse that. I mean, somebody, somebody calls you and says, okay, I, I need to see you so we can have a, a discussion. You're like, hey, you can't even sleep tonight. You can't sleep. I mean, I mean, the, all it says the discussion. You can't sleep. I mean, come on. How are you now going to fight when Beelzebub shows up in your house? Somebody says, courage rises to me. Now, David said, I would have fainted. This is David speaking. So what causes people not to be fainters and causes people to be fighters? This is it. I would have fainted unless I had believed that I would see ay, 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 the goodness of God in heaven in the land of the dead, in the land of the extra life, in heaven, in the new Jerusalem, in the land of the living. Oh boy, I came to preach to somebody who has a belief that I will see the goodness of God in Barbados. 
I live on a street called Welch's Gap. I will see the goodness of God in Welch's Gap. I live in number four, Fort George Heights. I will see the goodness of God in number four, Fort George Heights. I came to preach to somebody who says, Dr. Thomas, I agree with the word of God. I agree with David. But I believe that I would see the goodness that God has laid up for me. I would see it manifested. And because I would see it, I would behave it. Because I would see it, I behave it. Because I see it, I behave it. Because I see it, I behave it. So, fighters expect the worst. Whereas fighters know my fight is going to cause me to see. So, the reason why they're fighters, they expect to win. Fighters expect to lose. That's the wisdom nugget. Fighters, what made David a fighter? He expected to win. He expected to see the goodness of God show up when he faced Goliath. He expected the goodness of God to show up when he faced the lion. He expected the goodness of God to show up when he faced the bear. No, somebody said the goodness of God shows up in my life. The goodness has laid up for me. That's why David said, surely. So though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for he has prepared a table before me in the presence of my enemies. What is courage? Courage is fighting, is bravery in the presence of your enemies. What's the spirit of a fighter? It's that you take your position, you assume your position, you sit in your position in the atmosphere of warfare, in the atmosphere of accusation, in the atmosphere of manipulation, in the atmosphere of people who may conspiring against you, in the atmosphere of demons. You don't faint in the atmosphere, you eat in the atmosphere. Oh, can you go to the restaurant uh, and eat your food uh, when around you are your enemies? Uh, David said, I will eat and lick my plate. Uh, I will eat and lick my plate. He said, I, I will sit down at my table in the presence of my enemies uh, because I have on me the spirit of a fighter. Many of you do not understand that you are born into a fight and you will be fought until you leave the earth. So if that is the case, then put on your ninja outfit. Hey, yeah, 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 yeah. Hey, yeah, yeah, yeah. I said, put on your what? Your spiritual ninja outfit. Glory be to God. That's why the Bible says, finally, brethren, finally, brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might and put on what? Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand the wiles of the devil and having done all to stand stand therefore I said having done all to stand stand therefore I'm going to stand I'm going to stand in the midst of the accusation I'm going to stand in the midst of the hours of darkness I'm going to stand in the atmosphere of the demonic I'm going to stand when demons rise up in the house I'm going to stand I'm going to stand when sickness comes I'm going to stand where warfare rises against me. I'm going to stand where temptation rises against me. I'm going to stand. I'm not going to faint. <laughs> Some say I'm not a fainter. <laughs> Jesus. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, I feel this in my spirit. Some say I'm not a fainter. 
I'm a fighter. Lega hatabas. Ooh, labahas. Now let's turn to the next scripture now. Zafas. Now, there are two spirits, two anointings, two graces that you need in order to be a fighter. The first one is this, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you the spirit of wisdom, we're not talking about spirit of wisdom today, and a revelation in the knowledge of him. The word revelation is the word apocalypsis. It means the opening of that which was closed. It means the opening. Somebody say apocalypsis. So what needs to happen is that you need to have an apocalypsis of what is yours. You need to have an apocalypsis of your identity. You need to have an apocalypsis of the strategies of the devil. You need to have an apocalypsis of, oh, the location of your blessing. You need to have an apocalypsis. So this is spiritual knowledge. This is spiritual information. Information, divine data. It's called apocalypsis. And today the anointing for apocalypsis in your life is released. That you have an apocalypsis in your life. Jesus. Woo. So you need an apocalypsis. When the Bible says, for my people perish for lack of knowledge, that knowledge is talking about is apocalypsis. It means the knowledge is hidden from them. But when the knowledge is open to them, it's called a what? A apocalypsis. It's an opening. It's an opening. There's a knowledge. The Bible says the just through knowledge shall be delivered. It says, and they shall know the truth. <laughs> and the truth shall what? Make them free. Where somebody is going to get an apocalypsis on the truth that's about to make you free. You have been bound in finances. You have been bound in romance. You have been bound in relationships. You have been bound with peace. You have been bound with joy. Well, there's an apocalypsis that's going to come to you. That's going to open up the revelation that you need to get your breakthrough. For the just through knowledge shall be delivered and I decree over you an apocalypsis by the spirit I decree over you an apocalypsis by the spirit you have waited for too long to access this apocalypsis but this day I declare over your life an apocalypsis by the spirit an apocalypsis David had an apocalypsis he was looking after his father's sheep in the backside looking after the sheep but he had an apocalypsis that on the inside of me is a king that I'm a king and when his king identity was revealed to him and the anointing of God was poured on him that apocalypsis changed his life I decree over your life just like Esther had her apocalypsis even so you shall have your apocalypsis less like Saul on his way to Damascus or oh, about to go kill the saints he he had an apocalypsis. He had an opening. He had a revealing of who he was. Even now I declare, just for me, as a 16 year old boy went to bed one night and I had an apocalypsis that even though I was a stammerer, even though I had asthma, even though I was sick, that I had an apocalypsis that was ordained to be a prophet to my generation. And hallelujah. And that God had goodness for me that contradicted my condition. I'm here to speak to somebody. I'm here to declare the word of the Lord to somebody that there is an apocalypsis anointing coming on you. I declare an opening. I said an opening. I declare an opening. Information that has been hidden from you is opened unto you in the name of Jesus. Sometimes you need an apocalypsis about the location where you are. You need apocalypses about your family line. Lahadis. You need apocalypses about where you're coming from. Oh, glory be to God. I said, 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 glory be to God. There's an apocalypsis here. I said, there's apocalypses here. I said, there's apocalypses here. I said, there's an apocalypse here. Oh, I declare 
the spirit and the anointing of apocalypsis comes upon men and women right now in the name of Jesus. I decree by the power of God, apocalypsis. For some of you, you need an apocalypsis. I remember when the Lord gave me an apocalypsis. He says, son, these are the spirits that attacked you in Sierra Leone. Three of them. Three of them. There are three spirits. Three spirits. So I already know the three spirits that fight me. They attacked me in Sierra Leone. They attacked me in London. They attacked me in Barbados. They attacked me in America. They attacked me in Canada. They attacked me in St. Lucia. All three of them, I know them. Oh, and what happened? I know them by name because I had an apocalypsis. I said, I had a what? An apocalypsis. You need to know what attacks you. You need to smell it when it comes. You need to know it when it comes. I decree over your life an apocalypsis by the power of God, by the fire of God, an apocalypsis. Oh, hallelujah. Oh. Then he says, may give you the spirit of wisdom and apocalypsis opening. In the knowledge of him. Next verse. That the eyes of your understanding. Would be enlightened. That means. That means you see in the spirit realm. Now. This now is the spirit of understanding. Where you now see. What goodness has been laid up for you in the spirit realm. So understanding makes you see. Now. Apocalypse shows you. What God has given you in the natural. So to see, for you to know what God has given you right now, you need an apocalypse. Like you needed to have an apocalypse that this lady that you knew a long time was your wife. Yes. You understand that? Because you knew her, yes. yet you were going after other women. Yes. So, it's, but you see, but because, because he went after other women because he did not have what? The apocalypse. You see, are you with me? Hey, hey, bless the Lord. And then she, she already had a dream. To deal with him, but she did not have the apocalypse. But she came to me one day and said, Dr. Thomas, this thing, this thing, this thing. And as she told me, I said, Wow. I said, I perceive this in the spirit. I said, This is it. I said, This is it. I said, This is it. So but there was what? But what happened to her? She had what? A apocalypse. Hey, there's some of you right now. It could be your spouse is right here. But you don't have an apocalypse. Hey, Zava. You could be speaking to your spouse every day. Hello, how are you? Yes, sister. Yes, brother. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Hey, but guess what? You need what? A apocalypse. I decree right now. The spirit of what? Apocalypse. In the name of Jesus. You could have your enemy in your own house. Is this what happened with, with the minister Sabrina just now? There was an enemy in the house because I saw the enemy. Now, she had she now has apocalypse that the spirits that have attacked her house, they, they arise where they rose from. Because apocalypse deals with what is happening in what now or what has happened in the past. So, apocalypse deals with the present and the past. Right now, somebody could have your money. And all you need is to give them a phone call. And they say, I've had you on mind. And I was thinking of offering you this deal. But I lost your phone number. Now that you called me, when can we meet? Hey! So, you need your apocalypse. Hey, yeah, 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 yeah. I said, you need your apocalypse. Ha! Huh? Understanding is not apocalypse. Because understanding is not yet in the natural. Understanding is the future. So understanding is seeing what God has for you tomorrow. So apocalypse is, that's why Jesus said, I am the one who was and the one who, who 
I mean, says, you see, he says, I'm the one who is that's present, and I'm the one who is to come. So, apocalypse is for now and the past. But the one that is, is to come, that's understanding. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, somebody's going to have an understanding of what they're supposed to be tomorrow.